Rebecca Chai Chan Vet from the UBC Theoretical Sciences Research Center. Today's project is the Dickens Time Travel Initiative. Our goal is to represent Charles Dickens' life in three different ways chronologically, visually, and spatially. The analogs of these three concepts are present in our upcoming presentation. And now let's meet our crew. Now here are Two and Michael carrying the super bike. Got anything to say about your roles? Of course we do. I was responsible for much of the early brainstorming and a lot of the script writing. I wanted to give Dickens creative questions and try to predict from research how he would answer them. I worked with Two on writing the script and questions and summarized Dickens books. I feel that the reenactments are a useful tool in learning about Dickens particularly because it's easy for students to associate with the visual representation of an event. Okay, we're done! And here's Alvin, the chipmunk guy. Anything to say? Sure, I have a moment to spare. Well, I did all the maps for the project. Basically, we wanted to show Dickens' geographical position at various stages of his life. We figured that it's interesting to show how worldly he is. After all, experience is a powerful arrow in any author's quiver, and it behooves us to understand that. Gotta go now. Then we come to Savile. Hey, wait, wait. Uh, can you give me that thing for a moment? Okay. Wait. Sorry. Um, wait, give me a second. All right, how about you? What? Uh, how about you tell a wonderful audience uh, what your job is? Well... I did the events for the timeline. We felt that the timeline was perhaps the best way to neatly present and define Dickens by using the events in his life that defined him. It's quite interesting to look through, if you have some time. And I'm the technical director, responsible for making all those fancy graphics and the upcoming presentation you'll be seeing. I also patented the light modification and acceleration in orbit device. Basically, it accelerates a person's atoms to about one trillion times the speed of light, allowing them to circle around the circumference of the Milky Way in about three seconds, thereby allowing them to travel through time. We are going to use this device to get Charles Dickens to the present time, so we can ask him some questions. Okay, this is journal entry 1512. It's May 30th, 2008. And today we're going to be testing my new invention, the time machine. It dilates the fourth dimension by operating on special and general relativity. In other words, it's just really, really awesome. Okay, today we have our slave girl, Igorella. Stop this. Ow, ow, ow. Okay, never mind that. Okay, this is witness number one, hey. Michael Peng. And witness number two, Savannah Chow. It's been three hours, Billy. Can we work on our English project now? Okay, good idea. Michael, enter the data. <laughs> All right. Have you been eating pizza? Yeah. Don't get on the keyboard. Whatever. Okay, this is our power generating device, aka the super bike. It makes 1.21 gigawatts required to power the time portal. Yep, I'm done. All right, two, give us some juice. Oh, I think that's enough. Oh, I think we got something. And, uh, 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 never mind. I'm Alvina Frappuccina. Who are you? Hey, go back to where you came from. Okay, what was that? Hey, she's beautiful. She's a supermodel. Couldn't blame me. Come on. Okay, you know what? I'm doing it this time. Okay, when was Charles Dickens born? February 7th, 1812. Okay. Uh, Michael, enter in the pertinent yeah. data now. Okay. And don't screw up. Yeah, yeah. So Charles Dickens, you did do your research, age 57. Right? He was well dressed and of the upper class. He was living in Gads Hill in Higham, Kent, and he was very successful and famous with 10 children. Yep. All right, two. Can you give us another 1.21 gigawatts? Oh, I think we got something. Clear, 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 clear.
Where am I? Hello, Mr. Dickens. My name is Savannah, this is Michael, and that's two. So, this may sound a little bit weird, but you're in the year 2008, and we need you to kind of answer a few questions for our English project. Is that okay? This is ridiculous. Take me home. Hey, listen up! I've been biking for five hours just to get you here, and if you don't listen, this hair dryer is going in your face and you're going to turn into a little poon! And because of you, we have so much homework. So, it's only fair if you help us with it, right? Thank you. What was life like in the 19th century growing up? Life was not very good for the working class. When I was 12, I had to work at a boot blacking factory to support my family. The conditions were atrocious. I worked long hours and made little money. I was lucky enough to, be, to have been educated as a child. Let's leave it at that. I would prefer not to discuss these matters. Tell us about your first love. Is the character Dora from David Copperfield a representation of her? Ah, Maria Benno. My first love indeed. I fell in love with her at first sight. Sadly, her parents did not approve of me and forced her to move to Paris. She attended my coming of age party, but hurt me when she called me a boy after I professed my feelings for her. We met up more than 20 t years after that day, but I avoided her after that, even though she wanted further contacts. Maria, it was love at first sight. I think of what you day and night. My love for you knows no bounds. I was lost, but now I'm done. You foolish boy, my father does not approve. How did you first get into writing? I first started writing publicly as a young man. I wrote political sketches and became a political journalist shortly after for the Morning Chronicle. Eventually, I became an editor for the magazine Bentley's Miscellany and went on to write many novels. Mr. Dickens, you're a talented writer, had a photographic memory, and also practiced mesmerism. In 1844, you helped a lady named Augusta Della Rue by using a hypnotic trance. How did the treatment go? I treated her frequently with mesmerism, and the results were effective as she showed much improvement. She was more relaxed and was able to sleep well. I may show you on your friend if you like. Why do you choose to live in Gads Hill Place? I was amazed at this house ever since I saw it with my father on a walk through Kent. I did manage to acquire it in 1856 and have lived through there ever since. Also, Gadshill in the, is the location of the robbery seen in Henry IV, Part One, by the acclaimed William Shakespeare. Do you want to take a break and go out and explore around the block? Let's get some fresh air. Let's go. Yes, that would be nice. I have great expectations of this neighborhood. Wow, look at this shiny metal object! Is he okay? Oh, oh, oh. I think he's dying. Oh my god, I just realized I just made this huge error in my hydro boson equation. Every second he spends here is like exponentially multiplied. We gotta get him back. Guys! Guys? Guys! Come on! Let's go. Come on, let's get him. Let's get him back. Alright, let's get him in here. Two, get in here! <sighs> Goodbye. Thank you well. See ya. I think we killed him though. I hope we still get an A.